everybody video here for you today over coffee my 40th something straight day with the video that isn't going to continue things are going to slowly start opening here in vegas over the next day or two which is good today we're going down to egypt i've talked a lot about impact sites on earth I'm going to talk about one here today read a recent article they think this is an impact site right here this is about a quarter of a mile across it's about half the size as Meteor Crater in Arizona, but this looks fairly new. I've looked at a lot of craters. This one has indications, fairly recent. You can just tell the sand hasn't filled it up, and it looks pretty new from everything I know about impact craters. Here's a story from about a week ago. Impact crater discovered in the Sahara may solve the mystery of King Tut's gemstone. And here's a pic of that crater I just showed. I've always thought the source of Tut's desert glass would be kind of hard, especially to determine exactly when that happened. I'm sure we've had impacts out in the Sahara going back millions of years. And I always thought that if a recent, very recent, fairly close impact site was, well, that certainly would be a good possibility for Tut's scarab there made out of the desert glass. Could this impact crater be the source of Tut's desert glass? Well. It's pretty close to the Nile region. It looks fairly new, so it's definite possibility. It says the shape resembles a typical impact crater like the famous Meteor Crater in Arizona. The researchers also found chemical traces supporting the idea that this landform was formed by a high energy impact event. Depending on mineral content, rocks absorb or reflect different wavelengths of light. Using satellite images created by combining various wavelengths of light, the researchers identified a high concentration of orthopyroxene in the basalt rocks of the crater, while surrounding rocks show a low concentration of this mineral. This observation suggests that the rocks were melted and then slowly cooling, formed large crystals of orthopyroxene. I did this video a year ago, Egypt's impact catastrophe found, question mark, and I was wondering about how this impact coming from around the old kingdom had an effect on Egypt or if this wasn't part of a bigger event. Just to review, here is the breastplate found in King Tut's tomb in 1922, but the scarab there in the middle made out of melted desert glass, the source of that, bit of a mystery. Here is a piece of Libyan desert glass. It says it is pure silicon dioxide like quartz but its crystal structure is different. It also contains traces of an unusual combination of elements like iron, nickel, chromium, cobalt, and iridium. It is among the rarest minerals on Earth, as it is found only in the Great Sand Sea, north of the Kilf Gebir Plateau, one of the most remote and desolate areas in the Libyan desert. But this breastplate, the symbolism is pretty, pretty fascinating. You have the moon sign there with the sun disk in it. Eye of Horus, scarab, wings, serpents peeping out. This thing really has it all. Lotus imagery. And then the scarab made a desert glass here. Now in this article coming from 2019, it says, the origin of the desert glass remains uncertain. Glass forms in nature when quartz-rich rocks melt and rapidly cool. Tectites are natural glass formed when terrestrial debris is ejected high into Earth's atmosphere during meteorite impacts. It goes over how impacts have probably happened back millions of years. But then it says, however, no impact crater was ever found in the Libyan desert. In another scenario proposed in 2013, a comet composed mostly of ice may have exploded above the desert. The generated heat burst, an estimated 3,600 degrees Fahrenheit would be su sufficient to melt the upper layers of the sand dunes forming the desert glass, but without leaving a crater behind. So this was a bit of a mystery. It says it's also uncertain just how the desert glass became part of Tutankhamun's treasures. Caravans rarely cross the Great Sand Sea. So an impact site must have been a little closer to the Nile area than they were originally thinking. Here is a video I made in February. Jebel Barkel, Cobra Mountain, a moon and the star that fell. They seem to have text of a star falling nearby and disaster coming to Egypt. And this isn't the only place. 
Now here's a story that just came out yesterday. And this really goes along with this video. And if you remember a couple of years ago, a bunch of stories came out that people thought maybe a meteorite was housed in the Great Pyramid or maybe down by the Sphinx. And I did a video about around that time just because I had read so much from the text talking about iron and strange things and stuff falling from the sky. Here is a story that just came out yesterday. Ancient Egyptians believed the sky was a cosmic ocean in an iron orb that dropped meteorites on us. The article says it sounds like a phenomenon that would happen in some bizarre alternate universe. You would stare up into a cosmic bowl of iron, which sometimes cracked and sent shards of itself hurtling towards Earth. This is how the ancient Egyptians saw the sky. Among other things, it was a great bowl of iron holding up an otherworldly ocean that the dead would sail across to reach the afterlife. In the pyramid text, the image of the sky as an iron container of water that was also the sky goddess's newt's womb results in a sign being used for metals such as iron. I found this article very interesting. It talks about double and triple meanings of hieroglyphs and how some of them could mean iron dropping from the sky. The pyramid text continuously refer to the opening of the iron and its separation from the sky. This is a clear metaphor for the opening of the primeval leg, which the king needs to break in order to reverse the natural order of birth, death, and be reborn. The sky is an iron container, but it also is Newt's womb and an egg, a split egg and an oval shape that resembles the N41 sign like a container. It had a recurrent association between opening and regeneration and creation. Stuff falling from the sky, this is very interesting. And I've talked about stuff falling from the sky and so have other people for a long time. And it's reflected in the Egyptian text. And of course, not only the scarab, we have King Tut's dagger. Here's an article from December 2017. King Tut's dagger is out of this world. And people have thought about where this comes from. Most people think it came from a meteorite. Well, I just thought this was very interesting. These two stories coming out within a week of each other, they could be connected. All the Egyptian texts talking about stuff falling from the sky. Their creation stories don't have to do with just a flood. Also has to do with stuff falling from the sky. They call it iron in some text. And they thought these elements coming from the sky were extremely sacred. And that's why Tut has it on a scarab. So that is certainly a very interesting story, an impact crater, quarter of a mile across. What kind of devastation would that have made? Certainly would have been noticed from regions along the Nile River here, for sure. Did it make its way into stories coming from ancient Egypt, their religious texts? Well, it could have. Hope you thought that was interesting. And you all have a very safe day.